Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and right now I'm going to teach you about how to get the most out of the Cursed faction. So this is the faction that came out with Davy Jones' Curse back in 2006. So this is from the one of the suggestions, and now it's become a series here on my channel. So how to make the most out of the Cursed. So they're not one of the best factions, so you can't expect a lot from them. They're better at combat than gold running, but <clears throat> although they're part of the big six of in terms of like quantity, in terms of quality, they're far behind the big four, and they're definitely behind the Americans, even within the big six. So the, they're the worst of the, like, the major factions, and I wouldn't really have a problem with people classifying them as a minor faction, because they didn't show up for a while, and what they got wasn't really that great a lot of times. But that being said, they do have a lot of powerful but expensive named crew that we'll see soon. Uh, they have decent capital ships, along with two Ten Masters, Delusion and Guichuan. They have some other good capital ships, too, like they've got a couple Switchblades, Flying Dutchman is okay, the Executioner is quite good, uh, the Grinder is their best ship, and their best hybrid and best gold runner as well, actually. Um, they've got all sorts of gimmicky stuff and sea creatures, so, and that gets to the last point, they're just a really fun faction, so, although they're extremely evil. So, I would say to just try to have fun with the Curse, I wouldn't want to play them competitively, at least not as a single faction fleet. So, they're never going to be the best faction for winning, so, it's good to get gimmicky and crazy with them, because that's where they excel. So it's good to mess with your opponent. Um, they're great at killing crew. They're great at teleportation. Good. They've got plenty of stuff that can submerge. They even have two submarines. So they've got a lot of wacky stuff. So it's best to just kind of go in with low expectations and use them as like a fun faction. So that's usually how I like to play them for the most part. So I've got the rankings thread up or a page up in my site, Pirates with Ben. The top 10 cursed gunships. The Grinder is one of their best ships, SL Speed, 3 Massive Turbine. I'll get some of the pages up um, in miniature trading, but not all of them, definitely. The Grinder, their best ship. This one resembles like a French or, I don't know, a pirate ship or something from the early stages of the game, except for the Turbine ship type, of course. So, and then I rank the Executioner second, actually. This is a 4 Master with SL Speed and gets plus 1 to her cannon rolls with a Captain. So, it's quite good overall for cargo spaces. The Grim Reaper is a solid 3 master. Vine Dragon is a classic. I love this ship. This is a 6 master junk. They got one of the 6 masters as well. Not, it's not only the Jades that got one. Of course, the English or they got some, I said. Um, they as well. So the Curse, this one is the first ship of Ocean's Edge. This one gets plus 1 to cannon rolls. So basically, all rank 3 cannons. Good speed for a 6 master junk. And a Linked Owl Phantasma. He's got plenty of good versions, as we'll see soon. The Loki's Revenge is one of my favorite ships. This is a long ship with sack and two L cannons. So even though she's really slow, uh, if you get Captain Helmsman and maybe three oarsmen aboard, this ship can be amazingly powerful with up to 12 2 L shots per turn because you can use sack to get two move and shoots. So slow but extremely deadly and powerful. Flag Dutchman is okay. Bobby Yaga is another solid long ship. Not as amazing as the Loki's Wrench, but still pretty good ship. The Behemoth is interesting. This one has the copy ability, which we'll see on Davy Jones as well. Once we get into some of the crew. So this one is a sea monster with limit and then the possess the not possession, the uh, copying ability. So you can use this to copy the captain ability. So then you can surface and then move and shoot in one turn if you want to. And there's a lot of other good possibilities as well, such as the Endeavor's ability to eliminate two masters with one hit, for example. Just keep in mind whatever you copy has to be in play. It can't be from outside the game. Kalim is one of the fast sea monsters. There's not many good sea monsters or even sea creatures in the game. Behemoth and Kalim are two of the best. Kalim with triple S speed, a couple of good cannons, and then a boarding ability. So, not a bad sea monster. Still really expensive, though. They also got two flotillas. That's one way to optimize the Cursed. Their flotillas are kind of average, but for the Cursed, they're quite good in terms of weaponry, so they don't, they, the only problem there is they, they don't have a lot of ships that are fast enough to tow them effectively, so this one I would pair for the Silver Coffin. This one is a little bit better because she has better accuracy, but this one you could pair with the Grinder or the uh, Executioner, a couple ships with SL speed, so that would be a solid idea. The Grinder is also the best gold runner. I've got the top five cursed gold runners. They're not good at gold running, but they've got a few that are that are serviceable. Sea Monkey is another hybrid, just kind of like a poor man's version of the Grinder. Three mastered hybrid with SL speed and four cargo. This one has worse firepower though. Reverse Captain helps her a little bit as like a defensive gold runner of sorts. So the Sea Monkey is a pretty solid ship for the Cursed. 
So, one of their better ships, actually. The Sea Duck is actually decent as well. She's got sniping, solid speed, solid cargo. So, to optimize the Cursed and make the most out of them, you definitely want to use their best gold runners. So, these five ships should be priority, or six ships, or at least the top four, because ten masters are quite expensive. So, at least the top four would be a good priority to get. The Sea Rat is a really cheap one. This is just a common from OE, but it's, it's good enough. A little boring, maybe, but... Five cargo, get a helmsman for LS speed and four cargo, and then if and then you've got the option of raiding an enemy home island rather than just pick, getting all your gold from Wild Island. So Sea Rat is a pretty solid one. So and then I rank the Ten Masters in there too. And then they've got some other ships here. Kind of honorable mentions, but they're not really that great. They do have some native canoes, but they're not nearly as good as any of the other native canoes. So for gold running, they'd be okay though. For, in terms of the curse, five cargo. At SS speed for nine points total is uh is pretty good so it's very good so I, maybe I underrate them a little bit for gold running so the curse native canoes would be another good option to look into now we'll get to the crew this is where you see the gimmicky options come into play screaming Mimi is an L mover um, so five or six you can move an enemy ship L in any direction you have to give up the move action but that's a really fun one those are better in big games. Here's Davy Jones. They've got two versions of him. This is the copier version, the first one. This is a really unique crew. This uh, ability only showed up on Behemoths. This is the only crew in the game with this ability. Both versions of Davy Jones are extremely expensive, but also extremely good. So, I'm gonna make no doubt about this. This is this guy is really powerful. Um, and the next version is coming up. But this one, I would recommend copying maybe a defensive ability like the Lucy's Luck. Uh, so mass can only be eliminated on a roll of six, or maybe HMS Endeavor. This ship eliminates two mass with one hit. So great abilities to copy. There's other good ones to copy too. I would recommend using either version of Davy Jones on a ten master. There are a couple five or six masters that would be okay as well, uh, like Flying Dutchman and Divine Dragon. But overall, he's best on a ten master. This version from Ocean's Edge has got the all-powerful ability, so guaranteed extra action of some kind, sometimes for an enemy ship. And he links all cursed ships. That's really nice, too. Also, great artwork. I think Davy Jones has some of the best artwork in the game. I actually like the OE version better, but they're both amazing. Uh, Davaro, both his abilities, or both versions of him are not good. Even the pirate version is overpriced, too. So, not a great one there. Edward Lowe is possession, but it shouldn't be... It should be like a four-point ability, not eight. So, he's not very good. You'll see the crew they have that aren't gimmicky are not very good, either. So, they don't have many, like brutally effective crew like the big four factions especially the pirates have a ton of good cheap effective crew the cursed are the complete opposite gimmicky weird ineffective and extremely expensive so uh so they're not too good but al phantasma is a bright spot though he's got four cursed uh variations they're all playable uh the, the be two best ones are the last two we'll see the super rare version is okay um this version has world hater but not that good. It's nine points. This one is the best stack captain. Uh, Link to the Divine Dragon. Awesome crew. Great artwork, too. And then Rise of the Fiends version has SAT, Eternal, and Fear. And also Loyal Curse, but that's mostly irrelevant. So this one is awesome, too. So you can't go wrong, especially with either of the two later versions there. So Phantasma is their best named crew, pretty much. Davy Jones as well, but Phantasma give, gives you a little bit more options with 40 point games because he's cheaper and there's more options in general because there's four versus two versions. Fitzgerald is the Illusions Captain Hoarding Gold. Heck of Tortuga. I think the L boosters are a little bit underrated. This is where the curse can shine a little bit. So they've got a ton of sea monsters and then they've got a couple L boosters. So you can, if you're within L of a sea monster, the sea monster gets plus L to its base move. So you can make the slow sea monsters go way faster or Kalim you get two L boosters with Kalim, you can move SSSLL. So you can go really fast if you stack things upright and construct your fleet appropriately. That's only good in larger games, though. You, you need probably 60 points or more to pull that off. So uh, Master Scribe is actually a really good one. Explorer and Navigator keywords for three points. I would recommend him on the Celestine, which is one of their best gold runners, and probably should have made the list, actually. Might overrate the Time Masters a little bit. I just like how they can be good hybrids and are really durable. But in the Guichuan, of course, that's treasure ships. That's good. Uh, Mero is terrible. Getting into some generics. Papa Doc has the possession ability. You could proxy the uh, Return to Savage Shores version of Papa Doc, who has canceling and plus one to boarding rolls. 
so that's a much better version. Saving the Skull has a couple good variations, just kind of a basic named captain, but both versions are solid. Good addition for the Cursed. Sir Edmund, I like him on the Divine Dragon. I've already talked about that a bunch of times, probably. Tabitha, Tabby as I call her, as El Mover. The Headhunter is only available on the Guichuan under the regular rules. This gives you a good idea of how bad their crew selections are, though. Fear for six points, really only worth two. Title Fiends, there's no point in using them. You could just get Northmen and Trogs, Horde for five. They don't really have many ships that can pull off the Hoarding Gold ability. And then they've got White Crew for the Massacre ability. He likes the Sammy the Skull, and Sammy the Skull, that same, ver same set version, has Captain plus one to boarding roll, so that's a nice combo. I like to use that on Switchblades. And then Wraith has a couple versions. They're they're okay. Uh, the second one is better. It's cheaper. But neither one is very good. So those are the cursed named crew. A lot of gimmicky, weird options. So let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So yeah, I've got links in the description below to all of this, including God Mason's useful thread about unique abilities by faction. And then I also have a link to eBay. It's a little generic, I guess, but... Um, there is a lot up as of the recording, at least, of um, a, a cursed faction lot. Other than that, you might have to look through. I'm seeing another one, but it looks overpriced. So, anyway, another good way to get them is just to buy D.V. Jones Curse and Ocean's Edge. Those are two kind of cheap sets, especially OE, and they both have cursed stuff, including some of the better cursed stuff, actually, because D.V. Jones Curse has quantity and some decent quality cursed stuff. And then Ocean's Edge, of course, Divine Dragon. Plenty of sea creatures and the all powerful version of Davy Jones. So, you can also find links in the description below to the collection review series episodes for the Cursed, where I go over all of my Cursed ships and crew in my collection. But I think that's about it for the Cursed. Not a great faction, so more of a fun option. Don't expect we win, win with them too much, but they can be really fun if you go crazy with the gimmicky stuff. So, the question of the day would be how much, how do you get the most out of the Cursed? and you enjoy or play them often as a faction. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially on some of these weirder factions here. I'm going in the same order I did for the collection review series, so that wraps up the big six for this series, how to optimize the factions, but I do plan to do the minor factions as well. So feel free to leave your comments um, on the question of the day or anything else in the, in the comments below, and I'll be back again.